Will the gods, well, you know, Juno can keep Turnus from his day of death, but not for long, right? The symbolism, we already talked about the belt that will be Pallas' belt that Turnus will take and put on that will ultimately be the end. But I want to say that another one of the symbols here is the symbol of the son, the pride of the father, the mirroring of the father's pride. As well, of course, symbolism is fire, the rage of Aeneas, just like the rage of Achilles. The ironies run deep in this book, don't they? Aeneas is very much like the new Achilles. Turnus is very much like the uh, like the, the, the Greek Hector, right? And, of course, the ways in which those roles are kind of reversed. Of course, the other irony is you can run, but you can't hide from fate. Even the gods can't, which begs the question, wait a minute, who is in charge here? Is it fate or is it the gods? And, again, there's that tension. that We'll, we'll see that tension all the way through in our study of Milton's Paradise Lost, by the way. At 3A, we've already mentioned it, of course. This is a rewriting of the Iliad's book 18 through 21. I would say more of an extension beyond than just a rewriting. And, of course, in this um, as well, Aeneas will jack several times um, supplicants, right? In the Odyssey, we'll have the same game being played with, Od with Odysseus jacking supplicants, especially that priest at the, end of, uh, at the end of the Odyssey, right? Notice that Aeneas is a different man in the Aeneid, right? He sacrifices four young boys for Pallas' death, which, again, is, it just doesn't strike you as the kind of man that Aeneas is. What is your favorite, another three question, what is your favorite fighting text where an older man will kill a younger warrior? We, uh, we've uh, already mentioned Macbeth once. I'll mention young Seward. We'll come to him when we do Macbeth. Just lock that away at 3A. And finally, at 3B, what are your thoughts about this? Is there any value in celebrating killing and violence and graphic violence like this? Books 9 and 10, of course, I'm asking about. Um, and why do you think this is so descriptive? Do you think this is so that young warriors won't be afraid of dying because they will have seen that even in the most horrific ways, bodies and limbs and heads being severed? Do you think any of this works? Um, um, Stephen Crane in Red Badge of Courage seems to suggest, no, all that learning just doesn't play out in real time and when the bullets are whizzing around as in Red Badge of Courage. How about this one? This book seems to suggest it. Are you an extension of the people who raised you or of your town or of your state or of your country? How about this one? If you did have to fight and kill, could you and would you? This poem and this book of this poem raising that question. Well, we're not done with the killing. Book 11, however, is an amazing story because we're going to meet the amazing Camellia. We've already seen Camellia once, this woman warrior, right? And of course, the question will be, who says girls can't fight? Well, we've already seen that Athena obviously can fight as well as Juno. Come back and we'll do book 11 and Camellia. I hope that you're able to grow from this study. Thank you.